we have this this really exciting project that's going on for a while in my lab now. It's been one of the first that, that we started uh, and it's been also based on research that I've done as a postdoc in, in Harvard University, in the group of John Eisenberg. Um, we're looking at photonic fibers and these photonic fibers have a little twist to them. They're elastic and you can deform them and as you deform them they change their optical properties, they change their color. Now these fibers initially were inspired by tropical fruits that are found in the rainforests of the Amazonas and in Mexico. And these fruits are very shiny blue. Now these blue fruits create this color by a beautiful layered architecture on nanoscale that is like a interference structure. It's a bit like the filters in a microscope or even the, the shiny forest that 3M creates uh, for flowers that you pack them in. Um, this fruit tunes the structure to be blue. And we got excited seeing that and wondered if we can copy it because it has these features of Herodicium nanoscale and microscale curvature to make sure it gets the right color and also is visible in a broad angle range. Now I learned in the process of this that there was a lot of people, including Joel Fink here for example at MIT, who worked on these photonic fibers. And they do this with techniques that are scalable, it's beautiful. But we have a little bit of a distinction there and we do this with elastic materials. Right? So what we did is we, we, um, we combined these structural architectures that a lot of people have worked on these periodicities in, in the cladding of the fibers with the use of elastic materials. And so right away we had something that when you deformed it, you change the structure, you change the thickness of the layers, and that in turn changes the color of light reflected from these fibers. And that um, seemed promising to us from a lot of different perspectives. You can do a lot of fundamental research there, look at the mechanics and optics coupling, and study really the sort of the effects that, that lead from the mechanics side to the optical changes. But you can also think about using these fibers in textiles, for example, or using them as indicators for a mechanical deformation in a specific application. Uh, and one thing that we honed in on by speaking with, with people at Brigham's Moment Hospital, uh, one name that I can mention there is Matthew Carty, who is a plastic surgeon at Brigham's Moment Hospital, uh, was the fact that when you apply a bandage to a person's uh, body, a leg or an arm, often you want to know the pressure underneath this bandage. And there isn't a really good system that uh, people have come up with over the centuries that we use bandages to really tell exactly what the pressure is. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but they have their shortcomings and so they're not very widely applied. And so what we saw is we have a fiber that as you stretch it, it changes its color. And the pressure from the bandage relates to the stretch of the bandage as well. So if you want to create more pressure, you have to stretch the bandage more if you wrap it around the person's leg. So we said, okay, Fibers are a great form factor, a great sort of um, shape of material that we can just stretch onto a bandage. And then when you wrap the bandage around the person's arm or leg, you would essentially, by the color of the fiber, be able to tell the pressure that you exert in this bandage. Now, why is this interesting? Um, there is a couple of different applications where you could directly think of pressure being the decisive factor. Uh, one is venous ulcers. Uh, it's something that affects uh, about 2% of the population in uh, developed countries. And to some extent, maybe even more in, 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 in developing, developing countries. And uh, the, one of the most efficient cures there is to put pressure on the ulcers. Uh, but you need to know the pressure pretty precisely. It's between 30 and 50 millimeter mercury uh, in order to be an efficient treatment. And so if the pressure is too low, then you don't get much out of it. If the pressure is too high, you create damage. And so what we think is possible is that we can uh, apply these fibers into the bandages and then we wrap the bandage around the ulcers you get an exact mapping of the pressure across the leg and you can vary the pressure because you can just sort of just check at the variation uh, look at the variation of the color of the fiber as you apply it and then you can also check over the course of the day when uh, somebody has the bandage whether it changes uh, the colors change and you know the pressure has changed so it gives you a better control of the pressure underneath the bandage uh, it's a pretty neat um, little application we just have a paper that, that, that came out in advanced healthcare materials and now I hope to be able to work with, uh, with people at Brigham's Moments Hospital to, to figure out how we can scale uh, and also do the clinical trials.